for anybody who is wanting to update to 3.03 firmware, a little heads up for you. When you go to update to 3.03 on your uh, 878s, read your radio with your current CPS first, then save the file, and then uninstall the CPS, install 3.03, follow the instructions for the firmware update, and then open the old file and read the radio and then write it to the radio. If you try to read the radio with 3.03 and you're on firmware version 3.02, you will get a model type error. Any tone change something in the software. So that's why you've got to do it in that order. It'll say model type wrong or version wrong. So you need to read it with your current CPS first, save the file, and then do the firmware update with 3.03, and then write the new firmware. You don't have to uninstall the old version of the CPS, but it's a good idea. The installer itself installs into a different directory now. So it'll install into a directory that says 878UV2 3.03. So it installs into a different directory. So unless you want multiple copies of the CPS on your computer, which believe me, I had one guy who had every single version of the CPS installed on his computer from the time he got his radio. And I spent probably about five minutes uninstalling them just to be able to get him cleaned up and get his hard drive freed up so we could take and work on his SkyBridge. All right, go ahead, Kurt. Hey, I have a SkyBridge Max, and mm -hmm. I'm seeing IDs come across without a corresponding call sign or any info on them. Okay, those are new ones that were added to the database. So here's what you need to do. No, I'm Type sorry, in. this is on the SkyBridge Max dashboard. Okay, yep. On the dashboard, go to admin. Okay. And then once you sign into admin, you should see a spot that says WPSD update that you can click on. Yep. Click that. It'll run an update on the SkyBridge, and that'll okay. actually update the host file that contains the digital contact list from radioid.net. Okay. And that should resolve that. Yeah, I usually don't run an update unless it's blinking at me. Yeah. Um, with the SkyBridge, you can run that update once a day or once a week, um, just to update the host file. Um, okay. normally the update that they push out is just the hardware up or the software update when it says update available, mm -hmm. um, for the operating system itself, but not the host files. Okay. Gotcha. I didn't, I didn't know that. I just figured being, you know, Raspberry Pi, it would do a dynamic lookup. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, it's too, it's bandwidth restrictions. Because if you think yeah. about it, the server doing a dynamic lookup for all 15,000 Raspberry Pi hotspots across the world, that would be a lot of bandwidth all at once every time somebody keys up. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't think of it that way. All right, Eric, for your question, do you leave the SkyBridge on all the time? I leave mine on all the time. It will run the operating system updates, but I still log in and do the WPSD update as well, just to update the contact list. Um, on the SkyBridge, it just downloads the file and then reads that file. Um, on your AnyTone, you actually have to go to radioid.net, mouse over uh, database, and when the little drop down menu comes down, um, you'll click data dumps and then uh, scroll to the bottom, click user.csv to download that file. And then on your AnyTone software, which I will show you real quick, uh, screen one, there we go. All right. Uh, once you get that data dumps file, you'll click tool, import, click OK, and then click digital contact list. And you can go to downloads. <clears throat> and you should have a user.csv file. Click it, click open, click import, and it'll start reading that file in. 
And once it's done, then you can write that to the radio and click, uh, when you go to write to the radio, you'll notice you have two check boxes. Normally, other data is the only one that's checkmarked. Um, what you'll do is you'll click the one that says um, digital contact list. And then uh, click OK, and it'll take about seven or eight minutes to write to the radio. And once it's done, it will be done, and you'll have the latest digital contact list on your radio. Normally, every two to three months is when I recommend doing it, unless you start seeing a lot of people just showing their DMR ID number and not their name and call sign. Okay, Clint, go ahead and unmute. What is your question? My question is, I have a problem with my Anthem, the networks, them all, the, the demo, or oh, these are, oh, what's the other ones? Okay, are you asking what the different uh, networks are that are on the SkyBridge? Yes, sir. Okay, so DMR is digital mobile radio. DSTAR is a technology that ICOM came up with. I believe it was ICOM that came up with it. Um, I know that the Kenwood D74 and D75s can use DSTAR as well. YSF, or Yezu System Fusion, is something that... Yezu came up with, and NXDN, I believe, was originally Kenwood. Jonathan says D-Star is Japan Amateur Radio League. Okay, so those are just different digital networks that can be used. YSF, you download the stuff from the repeater to your radio to change the reflector. D-Star, I haven't got into the inner workings of D-Star, each one it has its own setup that has to be done. TGIF network is a different DMR network than Brandmeister. TGIF is a competing network against Brandmeister, but it's just another DMR network. Brandmeister is larger as far as the number of people that use it, but TGIF has several benefits over Brandmeister and vice versa. And M17 is, uh, as Jonathan said, a new 100% open source digital mode. All right. And Alan has a question. Yeah, I, I just unmuted. You hear me? Yes. I have Skybridge Max. It's got uh, Brandmeister on it. But also, uh, you helped me and we, you know, you gave us instructions on how to modify uh, a section in the, you know, in the code to, to run... Um, so you so can so we could do uh, a TGIF also, correct? Okay, and, and so anyways, the Max now has that you know in the dashboard you can do it a lot easier. But anyways, needless mm -hmm. to say, I have my uh, uh, eight uh, eight seventy eight or eight sixty eight one. Well, I forget the number, but anyways, programmed uh, for for both. I have both uh, both the brand the Brandmeister and TGIF uh, talk groups in there. Well, uh, some of the guys will get on. Um, the uh, TGIF uh, ne uh, uh, network and be talking when uh, uh, I'm getting ready. For, we're getting ready for another uh, for a talk group to start on the Brandmeister, but they'll end up blocking. You know, as long as there's activity on the TGIF, you you can't hear what's you can't log in or hear what's going on in the Brandmeister talk group. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is that because uh, we it, you sort of kind of fold the the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the SkyMax to do both? Or is, or is it, or are we, should we be better off to have a separate uh, SkyMax or, or a separate hotspot for TGIF and, and a separate one for Brandmeister so we wouldn't have that interference and separate radio for each? Uh, give me one second. Let me pull up the screen for my uh, SkyBridge. Okay. And I will show you one of the things that you can do. Um, oh, okay. Do dot one six eight dot one dot one seven eight, right? Or maybe one right. seven nine. Okay. Um, share screen. And sorry. 
Okay. Okay. So you can see right here, we've got my dashboard. Right. Um, if you click admin and okay. sign in, All right. you'll see you have something called TGIF manager that should be able oh. to be clicked on. Okay. If you click on it. All right. And then click unlink. You can type in the talk group that it's on and click request change. Okay. And that so should that'll, drop that'll... the it should drop that talk group. Okay. And then and then it let me to listen to the Brandmeister talk group then. Right. Once you key up the okay. Brandmeister talk group, it should work. Okay. Okay. And so and this is because they're both they're both trying uh, to use time slot two. Yeah, okay. Because they're both uh, DMR. They're trying to use time slot too, right? Well, the time oh. slot on the uh, Skybridge, since it's a simplex uh, hotspot, yeah, uh, it'll try and route everything through time slot two. Oh, gotcha. Um, okay. If you had a duplex uh, hotspot, um, that would allow you uh, to use, let's say, uh, you could put your Brandmeister on time slot one and your TGIF uh, on time uh, slot two. Okay. And it would send out so at now, the same time. Okay. So now. The uh, Skybridge, there's no uh, duplex Skybridges yet. No. Oh, yeah. You you, you said you were make, making a duplex. Did you uh, you made it yourself? And uh, were they going to ever carry one of those? You think or? My understanding is no. Oh. Okay. Um, mostly because there isn't the demand for it. Okay. Um, a lot of people run the hotspots in. Uh, just one DMR mode. Yeah. So there isn't a need to have two time slots. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, that that explains it. Then I know how to do that. How to fix that. Okay. Appreciate it, Jeremiah. Thanks. Not a problem.